Hey y'all, welcome to my Resonantly Speaking channel. And by the time you guys see this video, I would have decided um, what platform I'm actually going to use for these videos. I don't know if I'm going to do like uh, do Facebook lives or whether I'm just going to use YouTube or TikTok. I don't know yet. Um, but anywho, this is a channel that I supposed to start it about a year ago. Um, a lot of people don't know that one of my favorite pastime is resin painting. Um, I started resin painting, oh, it had to be, i say about 22 years ago. Um, I actually got in trouble uh, with some, with, yeah, I actually got in trouble, some legal trouble, let's say. And um, a way for me to get out of that legal trouble is that I had to do some type of, you, you know how that go. You had to do some type of um volunteering so what ended up happening is i did some volunteer work for a local church and in that church um i actually got hooked into resin painting um i actually found out uh not only did i like it but i was very good at it so it was just one of those passions that i kept to myself but i have been yearning to get back into it for a while now so starting off, I'm, I'm going to be just like you guys um, or people that just started or just watching it. I'm, I'm going to be a novice. It's like I'm just, until I get back used to it, um, I guess I'll just, you know, be starting out just like a beginner. But even though um, that's the case, um, I am very aware of the supplies and um, the type of supplies and things that I'm going to need. So in a later video, I'll break down like everything that I use. Like I have here. Here are my stencils, my brushes, um, some of my mats, my silicone mats, um, different type of paints and other Utensils and stuff that I'm going to need, like rulers, pencils, um, my stern sticks. have those, but I'll break that down in another video. But for this video, um, so what I wanted to do is I'm going to start the videos. Um, I'm waiting on a couple of more um, stencils to come in that I ordered um, that I want to use for my project. So while I'm waiting on those to come in, um, I wanted to get my table together. The first thought was to just use a, a cover, like a canvas type cover uh, for the table, but I like to think outside of the box. Um, and for me, it didn't make any sense to cover the table up because I'm gonna use it for my projects anyway. So I didn't wanna worry about um, what would happen if I get paint or anything on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint the entire table. I'm actually going to put a coat of black resin on it as a base and I'm going to let that cure for 24 hours and then I'm going to come back and add some color to it and probably do like a resin pour, um, a resin dirty pour onto it. I haven't thought about it yet how I want to add the colors but I think that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm doing today. Today I'm just going to real quick just get the base together for the black resin paint. And I have my paints here, and what I'm gonna be using is, I use, I really like Total Bolt. I will probably, um, as I get, get more into my videos, I'll probably like change up, but I really like this. This is the, what I started using years ago, is what I was introduced to, and it still works. Um, this is a very, very good, I think it's a very, very good um, epoxy resin type um, coating. And so I have my part A, tabletop epoxy, clear epoxy coating for bars and tabletop, if that's what it says. But it's actually, you can basically use it for anything on top of anything. So 
that's that and this is my part B so I got that and what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this measuring cup which are when, when my glass is at I don't remember what how much this is this is like a hundred a hundred mil milliliters so this is a hundred milliliters which is basically almost a half a cup um, right off to about a half a cup so together it's a half a cup of this and a half a cup of that so I have about a cup of epoxy that I'm gonna mix them all in here and for my base and something you always I am a creature of habit so throughout my a lot of my videos you're gonna see me use a lot of the same products like I really love glitter I love anything that's glitter glossy um, like that so I'm gonna use that in my black and let me see which black I'm gonna use and I'm actually going to I'm going to use that black, and I wanted to add, I want to black, I want to add like, a, I don't know, is it blueberry or purple? The violet. I think I want to add the violet. I want to add the violet because I want it to look like a, I don't know, do I want the violet or the blue? I want it to look like a real, like a black, blue look, black, purplish look. I'll go with the violet. So these, these these resin dyes that I use, they are by Limino. Limino. Um, I'm not very good at pronouncing these names, so you'll you'll hear me butcher them up a lot. But um, no disrespect it intended. Okay, so this is my black, and this one is violet. So what I want to do is I wanted to use use a basic black, but I also want like a real like a like a purplish color to it. Even though it's like a dark, I want like a dark purplish black look. And then I just add this. Um, no, I don't want to use that yet. This is my gel brush. I think that'll do it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to it. So. Let's get started with mixing this. And again, this is my supply box. And I will have a separate video demonstrating everything that's in the supply box. And I'll probably do that video and put it out before this one. Just because I like to have a little order to things. I hate when I start watching people's videos and it be all out of order. And I'll be like, what the heck? You know, so I don't want to be that. And I use a lot of these. I just collect a lot of these cups to use to mix in. So I'm going to get started. Let's get started with part A. One to one ratio. And it's deep, durable, high gloss finish, easy pour, self leveling formula, 100% waterproof after curing. Y'alls. Y'alls. And just, that just remind me when it said waterproof, and I just want to add that before I did clean my table and you'll see me use this throughout my videos too it's just some water um, I get this from the dollar store it's Clorox fragrance um, just some little hand soap but when this was halfway gone I just added some water to it so I don't have that so I did clean the table um, this is what I'm going to use basically when I get ready to do any of my projects. And where's my tile? Okay. And I love these tiles. Would you like a wet white tile? You know, these tiles you use for uh, when you clean the car out. These wet, wet dry tiles, what they call them. So I just use that to clean before I do any project. All right, so that's done, that's done. And let's get started with this, and I got my stir. And just another little side note, I am waiting on an actual electric stirrer for my epoxy paints. Um, and another thing, 
my, I ran out of my gloves too because I don't want to get this on my hand. So yeah, when I, my actual video started, I will have my electric stir. So I'm gonna pull this in here. Stop before it actually filled up because I could actually keep rising. Okay. Now I'm not gonna go through like the the actual like step by step A B C one two three um, for this because I know a lot of people that actually do this or actually watch the videos they're actually kind of familiar with it. But if not, if some of you want to see me, like, go, like, from the beginners. Okay, here's that. Like, from a beginner's perspective, let me know when I do a separate video for that. And right now, I don't have my gloves yet. I actually used the last of my gloves. This morning, so I got some plastic sandwich bags that I'll use for that. Okay, so I'm stirring this real easy. I'm gonna get up the phone so you can see it. Okay, and you wanna stir real, real slow, and I don't know what that is that I got into there, but I'll get it out. I just saw that, it's like weird. It shouldn't be nothing in there. Where did that little black thing come from? Not a bubble. But I'm stirring this up real slow to get it mixed. I don't want to stir too fast. You don't want to stir it real fast, too fast, because you don't want a whole lot of them air bubbles. But I want to stir it to get it really mixed up, really mixed good. And the thing about this epoxy, it is like really, really, really thick. really bugging me. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay, now I see. It is a piece of my hand I lost. Hmm. All right, that sucks. Because I was really freaking out for real. Okay, I'm not one of those ones that talk a lot, so you're going to hear a lot of that awkward silence when I do this video. I will cut that out so you won't hear it. It won't be too awkward. Yes, so when you're watching these videos, for those of you that are just watching these or that don't actually do this, and you hear them say, get, make sure you get all that out of there. I don't like the fact when y'all see those videos, they don't let you know. Some of them will, but most of them be like, you know, just make sure you get it off. But you want to get it off because this shit is expensive, okay? It's expensive, especially when you're doing epoxy. This stuff can run 
anywhere from 30 up to over $100 just per gallon. This is a half a gallon. Oh, it said low battery mode. This is a half a gallon, okay? So I got the half a gallon, which ran me about 50 bucks a piece. Okay, so this stuff can be very, very expensive. And another thing, I like it because if you can see, I don't know if you can see this tent. You see the, the clear? This is clear. And the hardener, the hardener has a little yellow. I'm sorry, I'm not even in the camera. I'm going to do them side by side so you can see. You see how A is clear. Okay, that's the, that's the epoxy, that's the resin. And the hardener has a little yellow tint to it. So you won't get it mixed up. But yeah, these are half a gallon bottles. And these half a gallons cost about 50 bucks a piece. So they can become very expensive. So that's why you hear people that actually do this, especially if they do it for a living. You know, you want to use every little drop. Every little drop you want to use it. And again, I have, I can't wait to, until I get my electric stir. I can't wait till I get my electric stir. And it make it everything so much faster, especially in my prep time, getting my paints and stuff together. It'll make it so much faster. And that's one thing about it. It's like anything that 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 you do. It's like the hardest part is the prepping. The longest, you know, just the prepping before you actually get to the actual project. But it's not too bad. Okay, I got that stirred up. And then, let's put this here and pour all that in there. Now, a good thing about this, now once it doesn't start, the activation doesn't start to mix together. But the good thing about this is I have, I do have like, three to four hour waiting time or period to use this. And that's what I like. So all right. So I got that in there. And now I mix this. This is so much better mixing than this. So you want to mix it. And you see that you can see the yellow on top. I want to mix it all in. You want to make sure it all gets all mixed together. All mixed together. If you can see at the bottom, you can still kind of see the yellow layered on top. Don't want to stir too fast, but you want to really mix it up good.
just started moving this stuff out of the way. Because once I had the color in, it's going to go pretty quickly. Cleaning up just little dots of spill. And again, I like to use is it just some hand soap. You can use some hand soap and put a little sanitizer in it on a wet white towel and I think it's good to keep handy to wipe up little spills and, and don't have to worry about things or paint or ink or anything sticking to your surface. That's why I like to use that. See, I don't know if you can see that. This, see that right there? You probably can't see it, but there's ink spots already on the table. Those are ink pen spots on the table, so it really didn't make a difference about trying to preserve the table. It didn't make any sense because the table is already messed up and it's an art table. So as an art table, that's what I want to use it for, as an art table. Okay, so we got that all mixed up. All right, and so if you can see it now, you can see the yellow consistency all the way through. It's not just layered at the top. Okay. Not just layered at the top. It's all the way through. It's like a yellow tint all the way through. Okay. All right. Okay. And and I'm just gonna put one, two. Actually, some big squeeze. It's supposed to be three drops, and I put three squeeze. Three squeezes. One, two, three, four. I got happy with the purple though. Now, if it don't, if it don't, doesn't come out as dark as I want it, I'm just gonna add some more black to it. I just want a little bit, and I think I put too much of my glitter. All right, let's go. Let's see what this color turned out. Ooh, baby, yes, I put too much glitter, honey. You see that glitter already? Can you see that glitter? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, that's why I was going to use my black. gel polish because I wanted to have like a jet black. I want the black to be like a jet black when I wanted the the purple to darken it up. But I want this to be a little dark. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but to me it's like a translucent black is what I'm looking at. It may be different look different on the camera because from here it looks like it looks different on the camera. So I want a little more black in there.
this is why I had to it's just some regular black gel fingernail polish. But it's a it's a dark, dark black with a high gloss. So let's put a little bit of that in there. Not a lot. And you'll find I'm a, I am an unconventional artist. I tend to do things by sight. I know what I like. Uh, things have to be visually appealing to me. Um, you know, so... We all know like red and white makes pink but I'm the type of person where I would add more red or more white um, till I get the the visual to it's visually satisfying now see this is what I'm talking about now I have that deep black I was talking about. Oh, that is pretty. Don't know if you can see it. Oh, it is pretty, yes. Yeah, that black gel polish I just put in there. Yeah, that was a game changer. And this is just some regular Kiss gel polish. What color is it? It's black, but I'm gonna be having to give it this special color name. Black hole. That's the name of it. Black hole. This is Kiss New York Black Hole. And I, I buy like a couple of bottles of these. I keep these on hand because, again, I like for my black to be like a dark, rich black. Um, and if you can see this gel, that's how I like it. And even though I use resin paint and I don't be want to use, you don't want to use a lot of your resin dye because, again, those are expensive. So even though I say three drops, I might add three or four drops, but I'm still missing that, that deep, rich black I look for. And that's why I use that. And I use, I use black a lot. I really use black a lot. Okay, so. That's that. That is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is, Once you get up now, and one more thing I did forget to show you too is my dryer. This is a specifically for resin paint. Um, I'm going to use this in a second. Get this tape, I gotta get it closer over here so the dryer can reach. And just to show you, there's the table. And if you can see the floor, just have some black covering on the floor. I don't know if you can see.